In this video, we're going to learn how to classify triangles, but from points on a coordinate plane. So if we look here, we're given three points that make up a triangle. We'll start by just sketching them. So 2, 1 is here, and negative 3, 1 is here, and 2, 5 is here. So these three points make up a triangle, and I want to figure out what kind of triangle it is by its sides. So typically, this is all about the lengths of the sides. So I'm going to look at each side and figure out how big it is. So the vertical and horizontal ones are always pretty easy, just counting the boxes, if you will, or looking at the difference. So this has a length of four. Um, it's four boxes on the side, or it goes from one to five, so it's a length of four. Here we're going from negative three to two, so this is a length of five. And this one, which is at an angle, we have to sort of sketch in a right triangle and say, okay, well, it's going up four and over five. So we want to find this length. So this is a right triangle. So we say that 4 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. This is Pythagorean theorem because this is a right triangle if we look at it that way. So 16 plus 25 equals c squared. And this ends up being 41. So c is the square root of 41, which can't be reduced. It's a prime number. So the lengths of my triangle are 5, 4, and the square root of 41. All those lengths are different, so this is a scalene triangle, right, because none of them are the same. And then we say, is it a right triangle? So a right triangle, we're just looking for an angle that's 90 degrees. These two are not, but this one, it's a horizontal and a vertical line. We know horizontal and vertical lines will make a right angle. So this is a scalene right triangle. Um, as a result. So that is one example. Let's look at one that's a little more difficult. So here, let's sketch the points. Negative 2, negative 4 is located here. 4, negative 2 is located here. And 1, 7 gets a little bit off the map, but I'll put it up here. So that's this triangle. So if we want to sketch this in, um, this is the triangle. So the first thing I want to establish is what kind of triangle is it. And none of these are vertical or horizontal, so it's a little trickier. I'm going to have to kind of do the Pythagorean theorem for every part. So let's start with the bottom here. This one goes from negative 2 over the 4. So it's got a length of 6 on this side, and it goes up 2. So this is going to be 2 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. So 4 plus 36 equals c squared, so 40. So it ends up being the square root of 40, which we can reduce. Square root of 40 can be the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, which would be 2 square root of 10. So if I'd like, I can simplify this length to 2 square root of 10. All right, so that's that length. Now let's do this length. So this one goes from negative 4 up to 7, so that's a height of 11. And it goes over from negative 2 to 1, so that's 3. So it's 11 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. So 121 plus 9, so 130. So c equals the square root of 130. And this can't really be simplified much because this would be 13 times the square root of 10, and that would be the square root of 5 and 2. So there's not going to be any good way to reduce this, so we're just going to leave this as the square root of 30. Uh, we'll square root of 130, rather. That's this length. And then lastly, this one goes from, let's see, horizontally it goes from 1 to 4, so it goes over 3. And it goes from 7 to negative 2, so it goes down 9. So 3 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. So 9 plus 81 equals c squared. So c ends up being the square root of 90, which we can simplify to the square root of 9 times the square root of 10, which is 3 square roots of 10. Anyway, so those are the lengths. We've got 3 square roots of 10 over here, square root of 130, and 2 square roots of 10. These are clearly all different lengths. So once again, we have a scalene triangle. If any of them are the same, we have isosceles. If all three are the same, it's equilateral. The next question is, is this a right triangle? And this is a little trickier because there's no obvious vertical horizontal lines. We have to investigate, are any of these lines crossing at a right angle. Our, the way we do that is we say, are any of them perpendicular to each other? So what we'll do is we'll find the slopes of each line. So to find the slope of a line, we just do rise over run. So this line right here, we just said it goes from negative 4 up to 7. So that has a rise of 11. 
and it goes from negative 2 to 1, so 3. So this guy has a slope of 11 thirds. Okay? And this one has a slope, it goes from negative 2 over the 4, so it has a run of 6 and a rise of 2. I already did that. So its slope is rise 2 over 6, or 1 third. So this is 1 third. So we've got a slope of 11 thirds. I know this is getting to be a little messy here. 1 third. And then this slope goes from negative 7 down to negative 2. Excuse me, 7 down to negative 2. So it's a drop of 9. That goes from 1 to 4, which means it goes over 3. So its slope is negative 3. So these are our three slopes. And if you need to go back and look at how I calculate slope, there is a video on that somewhere. So my slopes are 11 thirds, negative 3, and 1 third. Now remember, perpendicular lines, their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. In other words, if I have a slope of negative 3, the negative reciprocal of that would be positive 1 over 3. Which, notice, this one has a slope of negative 3, this is positive 1 over 3. That means these two lines are perpendicular. This is a right angle because these lines are perpendicular. So if you can find any two slopes of your triangle that are negative reciprocals of each other, you know that it is a right triangle. So this, in fact, is also a right triangle. Um, these two are not because this slope is 11 thirds. The line that's going to be perpendicular to it is going to be negative 3 elevenths slope and the other two don't have that. So that's sort of what you're looking for. So um, just do some practice with this. That's the best way to do it. Certainly have a bigger piece of paper than I have here. There's a lot of calculations that happen, um, but that's the general approach you're going to take. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.